Hi everyone, I'm Jess and I'm the content manager here at Course Report. Course Report is the resource for helping people find the right technical skills boot camps and courses for them. At Course Report, you can research the best boot camps all over the world, find out which technical skills you should learn, where to apply, and how to fund your very own boot camp or program experience. Today, I'm so happy to have Noah Bazer joining us to talk about how his bootcamp experience at DevSlopes has really helped propel his tech career. So Noah is a DevSlopes graduate um, from 2023, now works as a software developer and a machine learning coding analyst. So thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us today, Noah. First, I'd really like to start at the beginning of your tech career journey. So what inspired you to start a tech career in 2023? Sure. Uh, so I before I started doing anything code related. Um, I worked at a warehouse. I was a reach lift operator. I had done it for several years um, and it was taking its toll on me. You know, I, I didn't have the, the life of free time that I wanted. Uh, I couldn't progress in my career like I wanted to. And um, just a couple years prior, I'd actually taken some computer science classes in college uh, and I really liked coding. And so I looked for a way to do that uh, that wasn't going to be detrimental to my schedule or make me have to quit my job or, um, or anything like that. And DevSlopes was uh, right there. And so I said, I think I'm going to do this. And that's where it started. Yeah, I was wondering, there's quite a few coding boot camps out there now and online coding boot camps. Um, when you were doing your research, what stood out about DevSlopes? The schedule was the big one. I mean, uh, a lot of people assume that when they get to, you know, their 20s, uh, mid 20s, that they're never going to be able to learn something like that because it requires a full-time investment, which you just can't have when you have bills to pay, when you have a family to support, you know? Um, and so whenever DevSlopes was very uh, loudly a work at your own pace, uh, work on your own time program, I mean, it, it was a no-brainer, you know? Mm. Um, you mentioned you had taken some computer science classes before. So when you were applying for DevSlopes, did you feel like you needed to know how to code in order to get in or could a total tech beginner get into DevSlopes? You didn't have to know anything uh, to start at DevSlopes. I mean, it was it was step by step from the get go. Uh, the languages that I learned in college weren't even relevant. Um, and I now have a job doing the things that DevSlopes has taught me how to do. So if that's any indicator. So let's dive a little bit into the actual boot camp. Um, what was like a typical day or a typical week like in the DevSlopes boot camp? So for me, uh, just because I was still working a full time job, uh, what I would do is I would work and then I would come home. And the first thing that I would do is I would just check the chats. I would see how everyone is doing. I would see what people are working on. And then I would set my own goal. Um, and DevSlopes does a really good job of defining chunks of work for you to do. And so you can sit down and go, this is what I want to get done today, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and really my day would just be working through that. And if I had questions or problems, then I could immediately refer to those chats and channels. Um, and I'd get answers pretty quickly. I'd get that guidance really quickly. Um, so it's, it's this very self-propelled, but uh, still guided process and and that day by day has been pretty much consistent since I've started. Oh, um, I have to commend you on balancing full-time work with a boot camp. Um, how many hours per week did you end up committing to dev slopes when you were in the boot camp? Uh, throughout the week, not including weekends on a good week, probably about 15. And that's just cause I was working, you know, 50, 60 hours a week at a warehouse. Um, but even that was enough to kind of move me along the track. So i uh, very happy about that. That's awesome. So what did you actually learn in the bootcamp at DevSlopes? Like what were some of the main programming languages and skills that they covered? So I am a MERN full stack developer. So my main languages and skills that I learned were React, Express, Node. Um, but that all came from a foundation of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And those are the first things that they teach you. Um, and they are, do a very good job of actually working those concepts together. Um, I know a lot of people will come out of boot camps and go, well, you know, I've learned HTML, I've learned CSS, I've learned JavaScript. Well, what they taught us, especially at the end of each project, is how can we take these skills and tie them back into everything that we've already learned. Um, so really, what I was learning the entire time I was there was how to make fully fledged applications, uh, how to code well and work in an industry environment, how to market myself as a developer, 
Um, those were the core things that I learned that I think made me successful. What were your instructors like? Were they software developers, software engineers themselves? Yes. A lot of them work at a, uh, you know, worked at places like Microsoft, Google. Um, you know, a lot of them even now have those connections. Uh, my mentor is actually moving to my town this year in just a couple of months. Super exciting. Um, but he's been all over, uh, coded for all kinds of large companies and they're all very skilled and very versed. Um, which made things a lot easier for us. Noticed on the DevSlopes uh, website that projects are a key component of the bootcamp. So I was wondering what kinds of projects did you work on? Were they freelance projects and did you get paid for them? So at first uh, we had built projects that were basically tests to get us to take all of those languages and all of those skills that we've learned and to work them all together into a, a single uh, piece of work, a piece of technology. Um, but as time goes on and you start to develop the understanding of those skills themselves, um, me in particular, I moved on to freelance work. I developed uh, several websites, I developed software projects, uh, and I do and have gotten paid for them. I mean, right now I'm working on a site for uh, a law firm and they are actively paying me to develop their front face. And that only comes from that understanding. So um, yeah, projects, very, very big part of, of the curriculum, actual tangible work. That's so cool. And so when you're a bootcamp student, you're actually starting to work, if you would like, on freelance projects, right? Yes. Uh, there are actually a lot of students, and I didn't take this route only because I was uh, very fortunate to work towards connections uh, outside of platforms, but they will actually teach you how to set up an Upwork profile, uh, how to correctly pitch to uh, people who might be looking for that kind of work. They absolutely do I mean, it's very encouraged, right? There are courses specifically in DevSlopes on how to make that happen. And so the whole get paid while you learn to code uh, mantra, it is real. It's a real thing and it works. I mean, I paid for a lot of my tuition just by doing freelance projects as a developer. What was your cohort like? Are you still like working on projects with them or is this very much like you have your own projects and your own mentors? I mean, um, there are many opportunities in DevSlopes where you will work with teams, uh, teams of other developers, teams of varying levels, teams that have, um, you know, different progress in terms of the course and the curriculum. And you get very comfortable working with those teams. And I don't need to take part in those anymore because I am graduated and have a job. Right. Um, but I do anyways, because. I mean, it's just awesome experience. I mean, I, you don't get that experience even in the industry often. And I work with those developers, I mean, on a weekly basis, like they are, they are coding partners for life. Uh, so very happy about that. I also noticed that hackathons are a big thing at DevSlopes. Um, so I was wondering if you participated in any of DevSlopes hackathons and if so, what did you end up building? So I personally did not um, take part in any hackathons and that came down to uh, my own time as well as mm -hmm. my own endeavors because I was very much focused on getting a job. And the good part is if you want to focus on your career, you can do that. But I helped a lot of the developers who were working on hackathons and they praised it as phenomenal experiences, right? Um, instead of giving a rubric, here's what you're going to build, here's how it's going to work, here's what your code should look like. It is, here's a problem, take everything you've learned and go solve it. And that's awesome. I think that's a great uh, way to do that. Yeah, I've spoken with a few other boot camps. They also offer hackathons. But what's unique about the DevSlopes hackathon is that the winners can or may win um, cash prizes. Very exciting. You know, sometimes I wish I would have gone back and, and maybe went a little bit of time seeing those prizes. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> a lot of money on the line. Let's talk about career services at DevSlopes. Like, how do they get you ready for today's tech job hunt, especially when it's so competitive for junior developers? So I love this question. Uh, there are two sides to what makes DevSlopes successful in this regard. Uh, the first one, which is one that people don't talk about often whenever it comes to finding a developer job, is the technical prowess. Um, at DevSlopes, you learn how to be a good developer in the sense that you follow great industry standards. Uh, you can work well with the team, right? Because what a lot of coders, you know, fall short on nowadays is uh, coding in a way that is adaptable and scalable. Um, and DevSlopes does a really good job of getting you and encouraging you to work with other people to make things uh, as procedural as possible. So there's that. And then on the second side, I mean, there are classes and webinars just specifically tailored to 
how to write a resume, how to write a cover letter, how to write a LinkedIn, right? Uh, how to set up your network with people in your area, how to uh, develop connections, whether it be at conventions or meetups or anything of the sort, right? Um, so on two fronts, you are very well prepared to actually move into the industry and find a job. And even while you're still job searching, even if you're still graduated, um, they continue to help throughout that entire process. I mean, our student success team is awesome. Uh, and they've done a really good job with that for individuals. And what tech roles did you feel um, prepared for when you were graduating from DevSlopes and just entering that tech job search? I, after looking at a lot of the qualifications, felt that I could actually fill some senior positions, which is crazy to say out loud, right? Someone coming out of a boot camp ready for senior positions. Um, but the qualifications are there. I mean, working on industry level projects, um, you know, very large applications with very complex code bases, uh, being confident enough to be able to apply for those positions. I mean, it's, and it's crazy. You were pretty recently on the tech job hunt. Um, what do you feel like worked for you in terms of strategies? What do you recommend for any recent bootcamp grads who are hoping to land that first role? Take your projects, post them everywhere. Post them on LinkedIn, post them on Instagram, post them on Facebook, right? Create accounts specifically tailored for you as a developer in your growth. Um, right now, I am actually getting offers, even though I'm employed. I'm getting offers right now from uh, a company that is nearby because I took a crash map of the city that uh, I live in and posted it on Facebook. And one of the recruiters for that just saw it on Facebook and was like, hey, let's get in touch, you know? Um, so a lot of people think that being very technically advanced is the way to get a job. And granted it is, but you also have to be able to network. You have to be able to showcase what you're capable of doing without it first coming up in an interview. Uh, so that's, that's my advice to anybody. Make a LinkedIn, post your stuff on GitHub, right? Uh, spread the word. And since you've graduated from DevSlopes, do you feel like you can still lean on them or return to them if you just need any career support? Absolutely. I mean, they're awesome. Even now I'm still in all of, all of their chats and all of their forums. Uh, I'm still good friends with a lot of people there. They're just a great resource. Even if I had to go find a job today, uh, I know that I could go to them and they'd be able to to point me in the right direction on things that I'm doing wrong. You mentioned that you're still freelancing. Um, and then I also noticed that you're at Outlier as a machine learning coding analyst. What kinds of projects are you working now on in those roles? So as a freelancer, I'm still working on the website for the law firm. Uh, which is very exciting. It's been a very long-term process. Um, and then in terms of being a code analyst for Outlier, I train AI. Uh, and I do so specifically whenever it relates to writing uh, clean, scalable code, uh, coding problems that are solved by uh, LLMs like uh, ChatGPT, Genesis, the like. A lot of that has just come towards or has come from that experience because you absolutely need an understanding of that to uh, do that job. But in terms of the work itself, I mean, it's incredibly satisfying work, definitely more so than what I was doing before. Yeah, I was going to ask, compared to your previous role, are you already seeing like that salary, that work-life balance that you were hoping for when you came into this? Without a doubt. Um, I'm just as a, I guess, a bit of an example, um, I have a partner now. We moved to Virginia from Louisiana. Uh, I work from home. I make twice as much as I was before, and I'm developing a full scale game in my free time just because I have the time now. Yeah. You know? uh, so absolutely world of difference, um, just completely not identifiable to how my life was before. Congrats. That's so awesome. Um, and for those who are thinking about freelancing versus a salaried role, um, what are your thoughts on the pros cons of, of those? I guess the real question is what kind of work life do you want to live? Right. Um, as a freelancer, and especially when I was only freelancing, uh, I had the ability to set my own schedule and to um, deal with problems in my own way. And that was very fulfilling. And it gave me a lot of control over my work and uh, what the work was like. But on the other end, a salary job is very stable. And there are a lot of roles, especially as tech continues to boom. Jobs are up again for the first time ever. This is a great time. Uh, for people looking to get into stable and structured positions to do so. And so it really just depends on what you as a developer want out of your tech life. You're working on various projects. Do you feel like you're still using what you learned at DevSlopes on the job in any of these roles? 
Okay. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I'm developing a game and, and those languages have nothing to do with the languages that I learned at DevSlopes, but I've still uh, just picked up really good coding principles. And that has absolutely carried uh, the development of that project. And the same thing with, um, with Outlier. I mean, I'm learning languages that I didn't know before specifically for this work. But because of everything that I know about uh, clean code writing, right, about functional uh, slash object oriented programming, all of that pours back into me being able to understand these languages a lot quicker. So short answer, yes, I'm using them every single day uh, without a doubt. So at this point in your career, I have to ask, was DevSlopes worth it for you? Yes, absolutely. Um, it, it, I mean, it changed my life. Uh, just making, taking the first step was the hardest, but once you really just get the momentum and you feel like, Hey, I can do this. I mean, it, it transforms you. It changes you. My last question for you is kind of piggybacking on that for incoming dev slope students. Like what is your recommendations on making the most of their experience there? I would say, uh, if I had to narrow that down as much as possible, it is be prepared to learn and stay motivated, right? Um, the trade-off of going to a place that is very self-guided, right? Where you were given the the power, which is a very great ability, but you were given the power to learn at your own pace and, and to understand and tinker and build on your own uh, is that that is your responsibility. You are the person responsible for your success. And uh, that is very empowering, but it means that you have to stay disciplined. And uh, I think that going into that with that mindset, uh, knowing, hey, I have to do what I have to do, but there's help for me if something goes wrong. Um, that's That's my... That's my advice to anyone coming in. I love that. I feel like that's a great place to wrap up this Q&A. Thank you so much for talking with me today about Dev Slopes, Noah. Um, and, and thank you all so much for watching. Um, we're going to be posting a transcript of this video interview on the Course Report blog with contact information for Dev Slopes, just in case you're interested in applying for any of their upcoming cohorts. And in the meantime, you can follow Course Report on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And if you're a bootcamp alumni, don't forget to post a review of your coding bootcamp experience on Course Report. Your review is a huge help to anyone who's thinking of getting into tech today.